four, three, two. Coming up on Trailblazer Weekly, the football team made more history on Saturday in South Dakota, and the volleyball team went two and one on its three game road swing. Plus, we'll sit down with women's golf coach Lindsey Stuckey and sophomore golfer Caitlin Diebel. We'll also debut a new segment with our Know Your Foe trivia game. We've got it all on today's show, so stick with us. Trailblazer Weekly starts right now. We are live inside the CEC TV studios on the Community Education Channel, Radio Dixie 91.3 FM, and the Dixie State Athletics YouTube page with another exciting edition of Trailblazer Weekly. I'm Carrick Sagmiller, and joining me is co-host Drayson Ball. Drayson, excited to have you on board still throughout the year. I know you're gearing up uh, with pleasure for the Major League Baseball playoffs. It's a long season. The Atlanta Braves won their division. I know you're excited. It's coming up here in just a couple of days, although I know you're a little mad you can't watch game one unless you go find somewhere else and track it down. Well, it's on MLB Network, which don't get me started on why they don't put the major games on the major networks, but I can promise you one thing, Carrick, I will watch game one. Somehow, I will watch game one. Somehow, some way. I'm with you. I think they should all be, heck, just put them all on uh, just basic TV so everybody can watch them. Uh, all I know is that as a Red Sox fan, really get my fingers crossed that uh, the A's beat the Yankees in the wild card tonight as a Red Sox fan. Do not want to see the Red Sox and the Yankees in a five-game division series. Who wants to see that? No one wants to see Red Sox Yankees in just a five-game series. Major League Baseball needs to come around, and uh, you know, the NBA did it. No more five-game series. Let's make it seven or nothing, or they just don't play at all. There's our opening rant for today. Now let's jump right into our weekend recap, starting with the football team. The Trailblazers made history last week garnering its best start in the D2 era. On Saturday, had a chance to record the longest win streak of the D2 era. They did just that. So last week, going to 3-1 and one overall. This week, going to 4-1 and one overall. They've won four games consecutively. Now with that 41-38 victory at Black Hill State. And Drayson, more history for this Dixie State football team. You just got to think that there's special things on the horizon this season for the Trailblazers. You got to believe it, Carrick. I mean, they've proven over and over and over that they can win the games that they're supposed to win. Like we saw uh, this last weekend against Black Hill State, you mentioned the 4-1 and one start, best in the D2 era, and the four-game win streak, the longest in the D2 era. So they're breaking all kinds of records, Carrick. And it's not just a happenstance. They're beating, you know, worse opponents. They're beating lower-ranked opponents. They're beating good teams, and that's what they're supposed to do, and that's what we've been able to see from them so far this season. They did give us a few little scares uh, on Saturday's game, especially late in that contest, especially after you know leading by three touchdowns. There were times where you thought, oh, this could get out of hand. We could really uh, you know, put the pedal down, but uh, give credit to Black Hill State. They battled back. They didn't give up. They, they, they executed you know, a few blocked punts on special teams, things like that, and got them back into the game. But credit where the Trailblazers need to is they did the things they needed to do to win that game, especially winning you know, late in the game as they were to go get that late touchdown with 41 seconds to, to play. Yeah, last week on the show I called them the comeback kids. I think we could still use that because technically they had to come back still, the Trailblazers did. And, uh, and I don't know, I don't know too many other games where you can say you had a three touchdown lead and then you still had to come back and win the ball game. But let's just call them the cardiac kids for right now because over the last three weeks there have been last minute drives or last you know five minutes of the game to drive in and, and win. And they were able to do that this week with that 41-38 win at Black Hill State. Um, like you mentioned, it was good to see them overcome those turnovers and those block punts. The thing that's encouraging for me, you never want to uh, let a three touchdown lead slip away. But the thing that's encouraging to me is that they started with a 35-14 lead, and then and you might say, well, turnovers and block punts aren't encouraging. Well, at least it's something that can be improved upon easily. You, you work on catching punts and, and keeping your eyes on the ball in practice. You, you work on making sure your, your coverage and your blocking is where it needs to be on those special teams and on those punts. So it's things that you can easily go to the tape and say, this is where we messed up, and this is what we need to fix. So that's what's encouraging about uh, Saturday's game. Another thing that's encouraging, I want to mention two players before we move on to volleyball. Mike Sanders, this guy 
is a warrior. He's been waiting to play football again since, I believe, since the end of the 2015 season was, was when he played uh, his last season of football. That was at Idaho State, sat out the last two years, redshirted here last year, did everything he needed to do, got hurt in fall camp, has not been able to play up until on Saturday, and he leads the team on a game-winning drive, and I know he was you know, kind of overcome with just happiness being able to, to lead that team on that drive, and, and after that hard work to get back in playing shape, there he goes, and he leads him on a game-winning drive, and he had some throws that were on the money as well. One of those throws was the game-winning touchdown to Connor Miller, who scored three touchdowns, two rushing, and uh, caught that touchdown pass. He played quarterback in junior college. The Trailblazers are not using him as a quarterback, but we saw him in the Wildcat. He's dangerous out of that Wildcat position. Happy for guys like Mike Sanders and Connor Miller to be able to contribute to this win. Yeah, and they're especially using uh, Connor Miller there near the goal line in kind of those um, those first and goal, second and goal situations near the end zone where they can put him in the Wildcat. We saw a few plays just now um, that, that he can really, really shine in those low you know, sort of close situations to the goal line where he can basically, you know, make a man miss or whatever. And he can even throw it there, as you mentioned, from, you know, being a quarterback in his past. But they like to use him uh, near the end zone. And uh, that, that's one of the most encouraging things. If you look at the box score, obviously, not a great yeah. game on the ground, but the two touchdowns on the ground plus one through the yeah. air is always encouraging. Let's talk about the volleyball team, Drayson. What, uh, what did the volleyball team do uh, over this last weekend? Yeah, the volleyball team hit the uh, road last week with an opportunity to take sole possession of first place in the RMAC with games at Colorado School of Mines, UC Colorado Springs, and Westminster. Carrick, they did not uh, secure first place in the RMAC, but still a good trip, 2-1 and one overall on the trip. Uh, they did lose the first game to uh, Colorado School of Mines, but then came back and took care of business against UC Colorado Springs and Westminster to take a 2-1 road trip and uh, you know obviously kind of a, a, an encouraging trip other than the fact that you didn't beat the number 23 your team ranked team in the country but it was a good game a really hard fought match and the Trailblazers did have a chance to win that game against Colorado School of Mines and uh, but you got to look you look at the positives you did come back 2-1 and one from a, a tough road trip like that. Well, we said it last week on the show, it was happy for them that they could go and play Colorado School of Mines first on Friday. Uh, it looked like, you know, maybe they had some, some rubber legs coming off the, off the bus and whatnot in that first set, dropped that first set 25-17, but they bounced back with, a, how about this, a 32-30 win in set two. I mean, that's a lot of extra points. You, anyone who knows volleyball, you got to win 25 points to, at least 25 points to win the set. They played a 32-30 in set two. And then they move into, into set three. I know there's going to be some maybe could-haves and should-haves about this match that they look back on. Um, they led 24-20 in set three after that uh, incredible set two victory. So they had all those, those set points, let that lead slip away, and they fall 27-25 in set three. Bounce back with a big win in set four and take it down to the wire but lose 15-11 in set five. At the very least they let teams like Colorado School of Mines know that, hey, we don't care that we're here in Golden. We don't care that we're in your gym. We're going to take you down to the wire because we feel like we probably should have won that game, and we're here. We're for real. We've already, they already beat Colorado Mesa here at home, almost got Colorado School of Mines on the road, and like you mentioned, they turned around and took care of business at Colorado Springs and at Westminster, and they proved that at right now 13-3 and overall, 8-1 and in the RMAC, they're in a great place still, Jason, as we talked about with the soccer co with coach Broadhead, the soccer coach a few weeks ago. Uh, most every sport now has a conference tournament that helps earn that bid into the NCAA tournament at the end of the regular season. So if you don't finish atop the conference standing, it's okay. You know, the Trailblazers could get another shot at Colorado School of Mines in that RMAC tournament. Plus, they've got some big matchups coming up this weekend. But a lot of things still to be encouraged about with this Trailblazers volleyball team. And I would love to watch a rematch of the, the you know, the Trailblazers against Colorado School of Mines as well because I think there are a few things that they kind of let that game go in a few aspects. But I must give credit where it's due. I mean, Colorado School of Mines is a great, great volleyball team, as is Dixie State. And obviously, you know, we, we've seen in the RMAC, it's just even the first half season that we've been playing, there are a lot of good volleyball teams out there, and anyone can go play anybody and win on any given day. That's just how competitive it is towards the top. Obviously, the Trailblazers come home. They get a rebound game against um, MSU Denver, a really uh, a big, uh, big competition game there as well to kind of get that tune-up uh, and kind of get that sour taste out of your mouth and get another good win over a quality opponent. Of course, for you TV and Internet viewers, what you're seeing right now is highlights of the Westminster game, which was just last night. Uh, that was kind of the, the cherry on top for the trip. Uh, you go and you play a tough game in Golden, Colorado, Colorado School of Mines, then you go to Colorado Springs, and then you wrap up the trip with your new in-state rival, 
Westminster, and what better way than to go up to Salt Lake City and to sweep them away in three sets. Some of them were very closely contested, 25-20, in fact, all of them, 25-20, 25-21, 25-21. So Dixie State got its money's worth in that game, uh, out hitting Westminster just 164 to 119. Mallory Marshall leading the team with 19 kills. Hannah Doonan had 10 in double digits as well. Thing you saw about this Westminster game, not as many blocks as, as usual. Mallory Marshall had three, uh, and, and other than that, just four blocks as a team for Dixie State in that game, but they were able to get the sweep and put the cherry on top and finish off the win over Westminster. Let's keep rolling uh, with our uh, weekend recap as we get kind of close to our first break here. I want to talk a little bit about men's and women's soccer as well. The women's soccer team came back home for the first time in the regular season and they, they jumped out and took advantage of that first time to play at home with a one to nothing win over uh, Metro State Denver, who the Roadrunners at that time were ranked number 13 in the country. So a one to nothing victory for women's soccer in that first game and then a two to one loss to UC Colorado Springs. Jason, it was good to see them get that win and then and had opportunities, gave up the late goal to lose two to one, but uh, women's soccer, good effort. I think we're gonna see some good things. The Trailblazers in a good spot going forward. Oh, there's no doubt about it, Carrick. I mean, they've, start, they've started the season off tremendously. And I mean, how many, how many, how many victories do they have one nothing or you know shut yeah. out victories that's always an encouraging stat obviously you know gave up two goals to colorado mesa another quality opponent but I, i'm really encouraged with what i've seen from the women's soccer uh, team this season and i'm encouraged they're going to go forward yeah. to be even better how about men's soccer uh, a couple of games for them as well here at trailblazer stadium wrapping up a two game uh or a long home stand a four to one win over fort lewis on friday we've been waiting for that goal explosion to happen it finally did against on Friday against Fort Lewis. Uh, it was good to see that. Had chances to win against Colorado Mesa. Scored first in the first half. Uh, so they were up one to nothing, and then gave up a goal just about 10 minutes after that, and then a second goal in the second half. They fall two to one. Very encouraged, although they split this last weekend. Very encouraged from what I saw from the men's soccer team going forward to be able to to turn this thing around and get to where they need to be in time for that Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference tournament later in the year. Exactly. And, and, and anytime you can score four goals in a match, that's always encouraging. That's ideally where you'd like to be uh, every match. I mean, not, there's not going to be a whole lot of times where you're, you're going to score four goals and lose a match. So I think if they can continue to score like they did against Fort Lewis, they're going to have a good opportunity going forward. Uh, obviously, you know, tough loss to Colorado Mesa, but yeah. uh, they've been a good program in all sorts of sports. So um, they're a good opponent, but I, I, I think they'll bounce back and again, encouraged by the 4-1 victory. Let's move to the golf course quickly before we go to break. And we won't spend a ton of time right here on women's golf because like you mentioned in the intro, uh, we're going to have head coach Lindsey Stuckey and sophomore Caitlin Diebel on the show next. It'll be the first time we've ever had two guests on at one time. We're excited to be able to have them both here. Uh, but the women's golf team hosting their annual uh, Dixie State Fall Invite out at San Hollow. That was Monday and Tuesday. They had a great first day. The Trailblazers uh, were, they tied for the best, uh, for number two in, in the Dixie State Division II era for the, the number two spot in, in 18 hole scoring as a team. And then uh, Caitlin Diebel, uh, she finishes tied for second for the tournament with an even par for the the tournament she set uh, some some personal records tying the uh the best um the the best scoring round of 18 holes for for trailblazer golf women's golf individually uh and and just was a great weekend for them the men went to western new mexico uh, they they had a brief lead tuesday on day two they dropped to third. That's where they finished. Tristan Gardner finishes tied for eighth at four over. Nicholas Britt tied for 12th at six over. They will host uh, a fall preview of what will be the South Central Regional in the spring. That'll be next week. And uh, we're going to get out and see some practice later, later this week and be able to have a, a fun segment for next week in advance of that fall preview. That's a good teaser, Carrick, as you, <laughs> as you mentioned, we're going to get out on the golf course as well and play with those guys. But yeah, you talk about Caitlin Diebel we're going to have on the show next. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll enjoy talking to her. A 69 on the first day at Sand Hollow. Anytime you can break the 60s, it's always yeah. a good day. And 74 and a 74 in the first match of the season uh, two weeks ago. And then obviously the men's golf placing third at Western New Mexico. A great outing from both men's and women's golf teams. Um, you know, you know, encouraged by, you know, a couple of good scores there from Caitlin Diebel, like you mentioned, Tristan Garner, Nicholas Britt as well. Three top 15 finishes between the three of them. So encouraged by what we've seen so far on, on, on the links. 
we got to take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk more women's golf with uh, head coach Lindsey Stuckey, sophomore golfer Caitlin Diebel. We'll have them both right here on the show after this timeout. Don't go anywhere. More Trailblazer Weekly coming up next. Hey, Dixie State fans, this is Carrick Stegmiller. And Drayson Ball. We're here to tell you about Trailblazer Weekly, our new show airing every Wednesday at 3 p.m., beginning on August 29th on CEC TV, the Dixie State Athletics YouTube page, and on Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. On Trailblazer Weekly, we'll bring you in-depth interviews with Dixie State coaches, administrators, and student athletes. We'll also keep you up to date with all the latest Trailblazer Athletics news and game analysis. Don't miss a second of the action. If it's anything Dixie State Athletics, it's on Trailblazer Weekly every Wednesday at 3 p.m. beginning on August 29th on CEC TV, the Dixie State Athletics YouTube page, and on Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Testing. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. Hi, I'm Eric Young. And I'm Jennifer Kohler. And this is, uh, we're coming to you right before our show that we go live with Talking Point Live. And we just wanted to tell you to make sure you join us uh, Wednesdays at 9.30, live coming to you from the studios of the CEC here on the campus of Dixie State University. Yeah, and you can catch the rebroadcast at 9.30 when we're not live and 12.30 and 4.30. Daily, weekly. Daily, that's, mm -hmm. this is like way too much. Yeah. I think. But just in case you've got something better to do, yeah. there's all those times you can catch it as well. Also, you can catch us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Talking Point Live and on the CEC YouTube channel. All right, see you there. We're basically very catchable. Well, you are. <laughs> For a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real world experience mixed with cutting edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Trailblazer Weekly is the official show of Dixie State Athletics. You can keep up with all the Trailblazer athletic action with pictures, stats, and game recaps at DixieStateAthletics.com. While you're at it, don't forget you can follow our show on Twitter as well with at DSU Blazer Weekly. The women's golf team is already two tournaments into its season with two top five finishes at both events. Today we welcome to the Trailblazer Weekly women's golf head coach Lindsay Stuckey and sophomore golfer Caitlin Diebel. We thank you both for being here today and uh, you know taking some time on your off day. I know you just had your annual uh, fall tournament which is a lot of work behind the scenes coach. We appreciate you being here with us and then Caitlin for for being here. The first time we've ever had two people on the set, two guests on the set with us at the same time. So. We're excited. Let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about the first couple of weeks. Uh, first, uh, a great showing last week and then a good showing uh, this week. Maybe a, a spot or two below where you wanted to finish this week, but uh, that's okay. Encouraging stuff so far, Coach. Take us through the, the first couple of weeks of this, of this fall season and what and let us know just what you've really liked over these first couple of weeks. Yeah, our, our first tournament, we had the RMAC fall preview. Mm -hmm. We came out with a second place finish. Um, I know we were we were voted probably sixth or seventh in the coaches poll. And I told the girls that, and that just really motivated them like more than anything. We felt super underrated. So we were like, you know, let's go out and show them what we got and 
coming away with a second place, I mean, really, yeah. it pumped us up. Well, that's incredible. And then and if, as far as I understand it, I don't know if they were a late entry or just kind of a random in Tampa, the, the team yeah. that wins is not in the RMAC. It's an RMAC preview and they're kind of there. <laughs> Otherwise, you're tied atop the leaderboard and you're bringing home maybe some hardware from that week yeah. as well. But a great week there. Uh, let, let's talk about the fall invite and how everything went. I know we were worried about some rain. We we're going to be able to get it in. You were able to get both days in really without interruption. Uh, and, and a good showing, and, and I, I know the teams love coming to play here in St. George. How was how was the course? How did everything go kind of behind the scenes for, for you guys out at San Hollow? Um, the course is always great. Yeah. I don't know if you've been out there. It's one of the top in Incredible. southern Utah, in Utah, the state of Utah. Um, the first day was awesome. We we broke 300 for the first time um, for, for player total. Uh, Caitlin shot a three under 69, which was just incredible. Um, I can't say that I'm surprised. I mean, she's, she's an incredible player. She's a great ball striker. So it, it, just a great finish for her. Well, let's talk to Caitlin a little bit, get her input on some things. You know, you're off to a really great start. You shot 74 and 74 in the first match of the season and then came back and fired a 69 in the fall the fall invite. Uh, talk a little bit about what you've like just take us through your first two weeks and what you've been able to do to play play so well. Honestly like I've just been putting in a lot of work and effort um, into my game. I know I kind of struggled my freshman year as much and I wanted to I made it a goal to do a lot better this year and so it was just nice like my game's just been steady and I've been hitting the ball like I want to and putting uh, much better this season and so it's just nice to see some results that I'm pleased with. Let's talk a little bit of, more about Friday's round. I mean any, anytime you can break 60 or is Mondays. always good. Or, Mondays. Or, or, sorry, Monday's sorry. round. Sorry, I'm getting my days mixed up. Uh, every time you can, every time you can break 60, it's always a, a good day. I can, you know, shoot 60 as long as you don't ask me how many holes I played. <laughs> but uh, talk a little bit about that. Was there a shot? Was there a moment? A putt? Was Was there a time where you realized I'm in the zone and I can shoot really low today? Um, I mean, I was steady all day. The front nine. I had three birdies and one bogey, so I finished two under on the front nine. So I was feeling really good and confident going into the back nine and. Um, I just held it together. I kept making pars and I ended up um, getting one more birdie in there on my 17th hole. And yeah, I was, had to just two putt on the last hole and I knew I was shooting in the sixth season. Coach was right there with me. So that was really cool to be all done knowing I did that. How does it feel like walking down the 18th green knowing all I got to do is two putt and it's a 69? <laughs> yeah, it was, was there, what kind of pressure is there on like that? There was some pressure. Like I got up to the green and like my team was up there watching. So I felt pressure, but I was really excited. Like I was feeling good. I was, kind of excited to be done. I have the stress over with. <laughs> Caitlin, I uh, want to ask you about, uh, obviously golf's a little bit different. I mean, you go and you practice, you're working on the range, you're working on chipping, so you're working on your stuff. But obviously it's, and this is, goes perfectly what we're talking about here, it's, it's incredibly mental, probably one of the most mental games there is out there. How, how do you handle the situations when, like Drayson says, you're walking down the, the 18th green, you know, you, you just need a two putt to break into the 60s. And I mean, are you able to kind of work on techniques and, and things at practice to help you focus and, and, and come through in those mental situations? What, what things are provided for you? How are you able to, maybe what helps you in those types of situations? Yeah, honestly, I like playing under pressure and I feel like that's when I play my best. And so, you know, just, you just slow your breathing and you have to be confident in the practice that you've put in because when it's game time, it's game time. You have no time to practice. So I was just confident in my game knowing that like I was capable of doing that and I was able to do it. Coach, let's go back over to you. Uh, first, you hinted at this as, as you were first talking uh, the first year uh, as a member of the RMAC for, for the school, other than football, they've been an affiliate member of the, member of the last two years. You kind of made a statement already with that showing at the, at the fall preview. How different, obviously, you know, I don't know how much different golf can be, but uh, what are the differences as far as women's golf are concerned in, in the RMAC versus the Pac West? Uh, maybe just different places, different courses. Uh, what kind of effect does that have on, on, on your team and, and maybe what you see throughout the year? Um. I mean, when we were in the Pac West, there was always Cal Baptist. They were strong. They were kind of the ones to beat. Um, in the RMAC, there's a lot of good teams. You know, it's not just one, and we feel like we can compete with all of them. We've, we're playing a similar schedule, um, but there's a, there's a lot of good teams, so we're up for the challenge. Obviously, we've got Caitlin here with us, but let, let's talk about some of the other players on this team. We, sure. we like to talk. I mean, it's all about the student athletes. That's why we do what we do. Is, <laughs> 
because you, you all work so hard and, and it's fun to see them succeed. Uh, we've got Caitlin here with us, but but who else has kind of kind of jumped off maybe the page at you this year and and you've seen you know strides from the start of practice to now and you can tell you know by the time we're in that spring and that championship season you're going to be helping carry this team. Yeah, I mean Katie Ford has yeah. always been there. She's a senior this year. Uh, she's going to be having a baby right in the next month or so. Just incredible. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, she's seven and a half months pregnant and was able to contribute this week. Uh, we're just happy for her and we'll be sad to lose her, but it'll yeah. give others an opportunity to step in and contribute. Coach, uh, I'm, I always ask our coaches about practice. I'm just fascinated with how teams practice. So tell me a little bit about practice when you do. I mean, obviously you can't just show up and say, all right, we're playing 18 holes today and just send them out. Obviously there's many more things that go into it. Tell me a little bit about how, how you practice and kind of what things you work, work on. Yeah, we, we work on skills, obviously. Um, this year we've done a lot of qualifying because we have nine players, only five get to travel or play. So it's been really competitive and I feel like that's what's made this team kind of step up to the next level. Uh, they're feeling that pressure all the time at practice and every single one of them could have a chance to crack the squad, which is really exciting for me as a coach. Let's move back over to, to Caitlin and ask her a little bit about, you know, you've obviously, you know, had a strong showing the first two weeks of the, of the season. And, you know, if there is, do you have any, is there a weakness that you, that you know about? And if you know about it, what are you doing to kind of improve that on a week to week, day to day basis? Like in my game? Yeah. I would say game. my chipping is definitely like my weakness. Um, I would say before is my putting and, um, so me and Coach, we went and got a new putter for me, and that was a game changer for me. Um, and so that's improved a lot, and I think that's what has been like the main reason my scores have um, been lower. But yeah, chipping is definitely something I need to continue working on. Yeah, don't, don't ask me about my <laughs> mine either. So. Tracy knows how bad mine is. <laughs> so, Caitlin, you're a sophomore. You played here last year, and so it's been a little while probably since you yeah. made this decision. But I like to ask all student athletes because that's like Drayson likes to ask about practice. I like to ask this question. It's like my repeat question with each student athlete because I'm fascinated on, on why why players and student athletes choose to, to come here to Dixie State and, and like to hear their reasoning. So, I mean, think back to that time when you're making that decision. Why Dixie State? Obviously, you're from Boise, mm -hmm. so you probably know that you come down to St. George, you can at least get on the golf course year round. You don't yeah. have to fight any yeah. snow yeah. on the golf course. But, but what went into the decision and kind of what helped sway you to make the decision to come here to Dixie State? Yeah, so there was a few schools I was looking at, but I was really excited to come down and visit here. I had been to the area before and I love the area. And obviously, I wanted to find a place where I could play year round. And, St. George is a perfect place for that. Um, I met Coach and I felt super comfortable with her. I loved her. She's so fun to be around. And <laughs> yeah, she's definitely a coach that I wanted. And so she made it, she was a huge deciding factor for why coming here. Talk about the, the dynamic of being on a, on a golf team because it, it's a team sport, but you're out playing individually. Yeah. You know, you're not passing to each other. You're not, but, but really you're, you're cheering for each other as, as well as you can. What's the dynamic like between maybe this year's team, what makes it special, and, and, and how you guys bond you know, on trips or at practice so that you know when you're out playing individually, you're still pulling for one another out on the course? I'd say like, that's one of my favorite things about golf is that like, you can play for yourself, but at the same time you have a team to do it with. And I think traveling is yeah, like a huge like, bonding um, as a team and competing, just like having each other's backs and supporting each other while we're out there on the course. And we're all rooting for each other, we're all wanting each other to do well. Like, um, qualifying there's some competition which is good I think it motivates us like as coach was saying earlier to play our best game so let's, let's jump into a couple of rapid fire questions real quick Coach, start with you okay favorite golf course you've played on Sand Hollow Sand Hollow well okay. in the area in the area yeah. any, any golf course is there a different one maybe uh, Turtle Bay in Hawaii. Okay, that's, that, that seems was a like good a fun one. one. Okay, what about your favorite course you've played on? Um, I would say Sand Hall is definitely up there in the area, and then I played on Kauai Lagoons a couple years ago, and that was up there. Uh, always fun, always <laughs> fun. Okay, golf course bucket list. Which, co which golf course do you want to be able to play on one day? Augusta. Okay, that's <laughs> nice. on everyone's list, I think, right? Yeah, Augusta would be amazing, but Pebble Beach for me. Pebble Beach is yeah. great as well. Always good. I always wanted to play uh, at the St. Andrews over in uh, yeah, Europe. Obviously, that's uh, you know well known one, yeah. famous one on everyone's bucket list as well. But uh, I just want to be able to play well. Uh, <laughs> where I play, but I don't put in the time to be able to play to play well. And you know, I'm one of those that has the slice. That I know I have it, so I aim for it, and, and it works 90% of the time. And then when I do hit it straight, I'm out in the parking lot. But, but, but coach, you've got a couple more events uh, here in the fall. I wanted to ask you. Uh, obviously, two events down. And you're going to go to to, to Bellingham, to Western Washington next, uh, just later this weekend or next week, early next week. 
and then uh, to, pl to play in New Mexico after that. Talk about the importance of the fall because a lot of people maybe maybe don't understand you know golf, college golf anyway because it almost feels like it's two different seasons. You've got the fall and the spring. With the spring actually being the championship season, you can use the fall to prepare. Talk about what kind of goes into that to know in, in choosing where you want to play in the fall to help to be ready for that championship season in the spring. Yeah, right now, to be honest, I'm just trying to figure out who's going to be in the lineup yeah. and give everybody a chance to get their feet wet, especially with four freshmen on my squad right now. It's, it's been fun to see who can step up in those pressure situations. Caitlin, you as, a, you as a player, do you like kind of having two almost separate seasons? Obviously, you're working on your game year-round and, and doing yeah. things, but you don't necessarily get to go out and, and compete collegiately all the time. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it weird kind of knowing that, okay, I've got basically two separate seasons throughout the year? Yeah, I like it because I still feel like we get to play a good amount, which I like, but it's good to have that break in between to kind of take a break and just work on what you need to work on. Um, but yeah. Well, we appreciate you stopping by today. We're running out of time here in the segment, but uh, it's fun to have you both in here, uh, coach and player. We'll have to do this more often. It's been kind of a fun dynamic yeah. to, to see you guys feed off of each other. And maybe we'll have to play our trivia game with them next segment and yeah. like, pit them against maybe, each other. That maybe. Might... Well, we're going to have to get out to uh, to a practice one of these days. We're trying to get around all the practices and see how things go, and maybe we'll get out and kind of let you all walk us through a, a, a day in the life of a Dixie State practice and, and show us a thing or two and how we can fix our golf games as well. So we appreciate you stopping by. We wish you the best of luck. I'm sure you'll be heading up to Bellingham this weekend for that Monday and Tuesday Western Washington Invitational up there. So best of luck, best of luck up there. Thank you. And then throughout the rest of the fall and then uh, into the spring. So it comes quick. Before we know it, we'll yeah. be ready for those RMAC championships later in the year. So we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks. Thank oh, you. We got to take one more break. When we come back, it's our new Know Your Foe trivia segment. Dixie State football heading to number two, Grand Valley State this weekend. That's the highest ranked team that a Trailblazer football team has ever played in the Division II era. So we're going to get to know the opponent with the Know Your Foe segment. Don't go anywhere. That's coming up next on Trailblazer Weekly. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Oh, lunchtime, I'm starving. Yeah, me too. Hey, Carrick, have you heard about the most exciting new thing on campus this semester? Oh, you must be talking about the new grandstand edition on the east side of Trailblazer Stadium. No, man, that's actually not what I'm talking about. Oh, you must be referring to the new Human Performance Center they're building on campus. Well, that's a good guess, Carrick, but nope, wrong again. Oh, I know. You mean that this is the first season for Dixie State as a full member in the RMAC? All those things are really exciting, Carrick, but the most exciting new thing on campus is the new Trailblazer Weekly Show every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on CEC TV, the Dixie State Athletics YouTube page, and on Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. You're right. That is more exciting. Trailblazer Weekly, every Wednesday at 3 p.m. beginning on August 29th on CEC TV, Dixie State Athletics YouTube page, and Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Hi, good morning. Welcome to our set here of Talking Point Live. We're just getting ready to shoot our show, but we thought we'd put out a little bit of a promotion to, for so you know when this is going to be rebroadcast. Right. You can find us at 9.30. 12.30. 4.30. Sorry. Did I step on you? I'm always stepping on you. Are. Tune in and watch me step on Jen Moore <laughs> on Talking Point Or attempt Live. to, anyway. <laughs> Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods. 
yelled fetch, and by the time I brought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Trailblazer Weekly is presented by the Dixie State Campus Store, the official store for Trailblazer and Dixie State clothing, as well as cheap textbooks, discounted computers, and supplies for students. They're located in the second floor of the Gardner Center and are open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the week. Closed on Saturdays and Sundays, you can stop by any time because they'll be loaded with great Trailblazer swag all the time. Trailblazer Weekly marches on, and today we introduce a new segment for the show. The Dixie State football team is set to make the trek to Allendale, Michigan for a battle against number two ranked Grand Valley State. To help us learn a little bit more about the big time matchup and opponent, Carrick and I are going to square off in an epic battle of Know Your Foe trivia. Right you are, Drayson. Ten questions have been prepared about Grand Valley State. Our good friend Trey Davis, who really makes this show run behind the scenes. He makes his TV debut here on Trailblazer Weekly. Well, I don't know if it's your TV debut necessarily, <laughs> but your Trailblazer Weekly debut. Trey's here with us. Both Drayson and I will have a chance to answer each question. One point will be awarded for each correct answer. In case of a tie at the end, Trey's got a bonus question up his sleeve that will be used to break the tie. Seriously, this isn't soccer or the NFL for that matter. We do not have ties on Trailblazer Weekly. So let's do this. Trey, I'll answer the first question and then we'll have Drayson answer the next question first and just kind of go vice versa throughout the segment. Let's have some fun. Trailblazer Weekly, Know Your Foe Trivia, Trey. What is the first question about your Grand Valley State? You're going down, Drayson. <laughs> you go ahead. All right, Carrick, your first question is, how long has Coach Mitchell been with the Laker football program? How long has Coach Mitchell been with the Laker football program? My sources tell me that he is in his ninth season as head coach at Grand Valley State. I will also say ninth year. You guys are close. Eight as coach, six as assistant. Oh. Well, so, okay, whoever's writing these questions get a little tricky here. How many <laughs> years has he coached full seasons? Coached. Huh? All right. Okay, okay, I can dig that. As long as Drayson missed it too, I'm fine. There you go. <laughs> All right, Drayson, your question is, who is the president of Grand Valley State University? That's an easy one. That's Thomas J. Haas. Correct. I'm going to go with Thomas J. Haas as well. Don't give Drayson the point because he so said it wrong, though. I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> Thomas J. Haas. <laughs> you got it. And question number three, over to you, Carrick, is how many presidents has GVSU had? Oh, goodness gracious. How many presidents has Grand Valley State oh, University had? <laughs> My sources tell me that the Grand Valley State has had eight presidents. So what are your sort? I mean, who are your sort? I mean, what sources are you, you got? Like re researchers, eight presidents? I don't know. Let's see. If I if I remember correctly, I think they've only had seven. Carrick. The correct answer is four. Oh. Okay. All right. A little much. There. Now before we move on, I see that I've only, I don't have any points on the scoreboard. We're gonna have them correct that because both Drayson and I got the answer right about the president. So we got to go one point. Uh, for each of us. No jipping me points back there, guys. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Moving on. All right, Carrick, yours is, name a football player set to be in <clears throat> inducted into the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame this year. Holy smokes. I mean, uh, man, we're going, we're where, diving. Where would you even find this? I mean, oh, is it a current, boy. is it a current player on the um, Grand Valley State Well, roster? to go into the Michigan State Hall of Fame is probably a former player and uh, I am just going to have to say, I don't know, because that, that, that was not in my notes. Oh, I'm going to say, I mean, if it's Michigan Hall of Fame, I mean, I'm going to say Tom Brady. I mean, I don't know if he maybe played <laughs> well, it's at Grand, tied Valley to Grand Valley State, State somewhere. I'm going to say Tom Brady. You know what? My answer here is Colin Finnerty. Colin yeah. Finnerty. No, it's. I just, we're both wrong. I, I mean, know. I don't know. I don't, I don't even Kudos know where you to would... who wrote these questions because they dug deep. I don't even for know that where you would find that answer. I mean, who knows what? Uh, who anyway? No, we were provided with the links to study where the questions came from. So it either came I from gvsu.edu or gvsulakers.com. Did you see the size of those documents? I mean, it was like the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just one document? All right, moving on. All right, the next question is, who is <clears throat> who is the leading rusher at GVSU? 
This one I do know. That's Shantez Moss. 81 carries, 509 yards, four touchdowns. I also know that one as well, Shantez Moss. And both of you are correct. So far, so good, Carrick. What are we going to do about that uh, pesky uh, tri tri uh, tiebreaker question at the end? Well, we'll see <laughs> if we get there. Hey, it's tied 2-2 two two right now. Tied so. it up. All right, next question. Next question. Name the top three tacklers for the GVSU defense. Well, this was one of the pages that had a lot of names on it, uh, but I don't know that I can name any single one defensive player. What if I only know two? Is that worth a point since Drayson did not have any? I'll sure. name the top two tacklers, Tyler Bradfield and Dylan Carroll, tied with 32 tackles. I can even tell you what positions they play. Bradfield is a linebacker, Dylan Carroll is a defensive lineman. Is that good enough? Can we I get a point I believe you are good enough for that because the third one is Isaiah, and I know I'm going to kind of pronounce this wrong, Katsum? Kansham? I'm Your so guess sorry. Your is as good as mine. I, I do apologize for... If I if I mispronounce that, <laughs> let me let me divert your attention to the scoreboard. Drayson is now three to two in favor of. Hey, it's, long, it's a long game. Let's get to the next question. Perfect. Question seven is: What is the name of the GVSU football facility? With a bonus, what year did it open? Because I know the year that it opened. It was 1973. Was the year that it opened. But I, I'm blanking on the name. I know where I can remember where it was at on the page, and I know exactly where it was at. I know you're going to know it as well, but 1973 was when it opened. I'm going to go with Lubber Stadium, and I'm going to say 1979. Ooh. Well, Drayson, you are correct on the year. It is indeed 1973, and Lubber Stadium is also correct. So if we could split that, it's up to you. All right, that's fine. He got the year. We'll I got the point. name. We'll both get a point. Yep. Okay. All okay. Right. Four, Four to three. three. Here we go. There we go. And I can dig that. I agree. I think you guys are doing great. How now, many questions question. in are we, Dre? We Dre, are. Sorry. We are up to question eight right this now. This is question eight. Okay. This is fun. This is. This is. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is Trailblazer Weekly. Know your foe trivia. The Dixie State football team heading out to Grand Valley State. On Saturday, they are ranked number two in all of Division Two uh, right now. This would be like if you want to, if you want an example, like a Division One example. This is like maybe like Utah State going to play Alabama. I mean, that, that's really Grand, Grand Valley State is a top tier uh, Division Two football program that would beat a lot of FCS Division One teams. I kid you not. This this team is uh, is incredible. Wow. So the Dixie State Trailblazers would have their hands full this weekend. But uh, this is a segment we're debuting that we'll do maybe once a month or so or every, every couple of months where we have a big game coming up. So like, we want to get to know our foe. We want to know more about Grand Valley State University. So that's where we stand right now. Four to three for you radio listeners uh, out there. I think I'm being buzzed. Am I taking too long before the next question or what? I've got to let the radio listeners know what's going on, guys. Absolutely. So four to three, Carrick leading right now. Question eight, Trey, take it away. What is the largest crowd seen at Lubber Stadium? So this one actually kind of shocked me. But based on the pictures, it didn't look like this stadium would be able to hold this, this number. But the exact number, I believe, if I, if I remember correctly, 16,467 was the total attendance there for one game. I would agree, 16,467. You are correct. Ah. I mean, that's good for me because I got the point, but it, it's basically, you know, nullified because you got it as well. So well, it's going to be tough to come back. Two questions tough left. To come back. Let's we'll see right. what happens Let's see here. what happens with you two. Question nine. Five to four, Carrick leading, by the way. <laughs> How many fourth quarter points has GVSU scored to date this season? Fourth quarter points. So we're talking about total points. Yes. Scored total in the fourth points quarter. scored in the fourth quarter. I'm trying to just add up in my head the total amount of points that they scored all season because I know that number and try to just like guess about what they would score in the fourth quarter. So, <laughs> so I'm going to say uh, 79 points in the fourth quarter. I'm not going to lie. I did not get this one in my notes. Uh, I do have this button I could click right here that would take me right to the number. I won't do that. Uh, he says 79. I'm going to go with, uh, how about 86 Ooh. point score in the fourth quarter? I am so sorry to you both. It was 47. 47. 
All right, Carrick, this is the showdown. So showdown that was question, question nine, or is this question yep. 10? This, this is We question are now 10. on to question 10. Okay, so it is, for you radio listeners, I realized I didn't, I didn't do a very good job of this early in the game, because obviously the people listening on the radio right now, Radio Dixie 913, they can't see the scoreboard. So it's five to four. This is a 10 question battle. Carrick is leading, that is me, by the way, five to four. This is the 10th question. In order for Drayson to force the tiebreaker, he has to get this question correct, and I have to get this question incorrect. I am answering first Yes. this time. All right, here we go. Your last question. How many fourth quarter points have they given up? Oh, goodness. Oh, word. Here we go again. Uh, they've only given up, I'm going to say 11. So it was, 40, it was 49 that they've allowed, and they've won all their games. So I can't imagine this number would be higher than 49. So I'm going to say 11's pretty low. I'm going to say 11's a weird number as well. Like, why would you pick 11? Yeah, you, you're going to have to get, like, a safety oh, in there. Two-point conversion and a field goal. Uh, I, well, I mean, uh -huh. that's – okay. I'm going to say – time touchdowns. I'm going to say 14. The correct answer is – Seven. I was oh. going to say that. I was going to say seven. I was, oh man, that was close. Now All I right. do have a bonus question you know if you guys are interested. Let's just hear it for fun. Let's the just hear it for over. fun. Let's just hear it Carrick, for fun. you've won so. five to four. Let's just hear it for fun. All right, so that question is, name the quarterback's coach. Oh, quarterback man. coach. Quarterback coach. I have the offensive coordinator and I have both defensive coordinators, but I do not have the uh, offensive, uh, the, co the quarterback coach. As Carrick is looking up the, <laughs> looking up the, uh, the stats here, yeah, the links I pushed, here. Well, my fat all... finger, I pushed the wrong link in. I clicked the link to Lubber Stadium, so that's not going to give me the answer. Right. I can tell you Bart Williams is the quarterback, and I can tell you that he's 71 of 134 for 1,167 yards and 14 touchdowns, which ranks sixth nationally. He's not thrown an interception yet, but I cannot tell you who Bart Williams' coach, position coach is. Well, that answer is Matt Fits them. Matt okay. fits them. I wouldn't have never have guessed Matt fits them. Great coach, though. Great coach, Great though. Great coach, though. No, but seriously, in, in all seriousness, uh, this is going to be a fun game on Saturday as the Trailblazers head out to Lubbers Stadium in uh, Allendale, Michigan. One more fun fact for you, just to kind of show you how big this program is. And If you can name this, because I pulled this out of their game notes, and I doubt you probably went there. I'll call it a, uh, well, I said there will be no ties. I'll give you a bo two bonus points, and you win, Drace. And if you can tell me how many radio affiliates Grand Valley State has, how many radio stations will this game be broadcast on in the, in the Michigan area well, on I know, Saturday? I know it will be on TV on ESPN3. Yes. All their games are on ESPN3, so that's yeah. kind of a big mm -hmm. deal. So how many radio affiliates? I mean, obviously, it's got to be more than like one or two because it's oh, yeah. going to be a significant number. I'm going to say nine radio affiliates. Why don't you try doubling that number? Wow. 18, 18 radio affiliates. I mean, that's like inside of the state of Utah, like BYU and Utah, like they've got radio affiliates all throughout the state of Utah. This is a Division II school in Michigan. So, you I mean, you've got obviously Michigan and Michigan State and all the other big programs that are back there. And then here's Grand Valley State, Division II program. They've got probably just as many radio affiliates as some of those big Division I schools back there. So it's going to be fun. This is the highest ranked team that Dixie State has ever played in the Division II era. Uh, they've had 15 games up to this point against ranked teams. They've never played anyone this high, number two or number one. So an opportunity to go and, and, and you know, have some fun and, and see what happens. And if you win that ball game, then things are looking great for you at this time. Trey, buddy, we appreciate you coming on the show. And, and I think you've just established yourself as the official voice of the Know Your Foe trivia segment. So, so thanks for doing that and helping us out with those questions. We also thank you for all your hard work behind the scenes. Uh, for, you know, these guys don't like to get credit for this because it's kind of anonymous work. Trey is, is the guy that when you're watching on TV or on the internet, you see the graphics, you see the highlights, the B-roll. He's put together the majority of those. So he helps with, with all the visuals behind the scenes. And Trey, thank you very much, man. We, we're excited to have you on board. Oh, you're very welcome. I love working here. So I love the show. Let me just take one more opportunity to rub in the fact that I won the inaugural Know Your Foe trivia segment. <laughs> we're going to have to come up with a trophy for it that we pass back and forth. Uh, it was a close matchup, 5-4 to four victory uh, for myself in the Know Your Foe trivia segment. we got to take a break. When we come back, we'll put a bow on the show. We'll take a quick look ahead at a weekend preview as uh, well as we take a look back at some of the fun stuff we've had on the show today. One final timeout. We come back to put a bow on the show on this week's edition of Trailblazer Weekly. We're back with more right after this. 
Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one dance. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. See on page four that the projections need to be earthquake next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Fast-paced family life in need of a slowdown? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. Did you know all those green shapes on maps are parks and forests? It's true. Visit discovertheforest.org and plan to visit a park or forest near you instead of just wondering what it would have been like. While the word forest might make you think of distant lands from far, far away, please note parks and forests are closer than you think, which means things like beautiful scenery, fresh air, and family time are also closer than you think. For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one dance. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. The Dixie State Stretch Internet Portal and the RMAC Network is your home for all Trailblazer Athletics live streaming. Don't miss a second of the action. You can watch DSU games home and away at portal.stretchinternet.com slash Dixie State. That's portal.stretchinternet.com slash Dixie State. Welcome back inside Trailblazer Weekly inside the CEC TV studios. Time to put a bow on the show as we take a look ahead at what's in store this weekend for Trailblazer Athletics. Want to start with first a couple of main things. First of all, volleyball, Drayson, back in action this weekend inside the Student Activity Center. So let's start with that. We'll also talk a little bit about, more about football and, and that tough matchup they have coming up. But let's start with volleyball, an opportunity to uh, get back in the Student Activity Center and uh, a big matchup with Metro State Denver on Saturday, a team that will be up at the top of the standings as well. But still, got to take, take care of business on Friday against Shadron State, against a team that's a little farther down in the conference standings, but it could be a little bit of a trap game. Got to take care of business on Friday before you get to the big matchup on Saturday. And it's, if nothing else, it's a good tune-up game because you got to play well against Shadron mm -hmm. State or else you could have the whole weekend ruined for you just like that. Shadron State, 3-5 and five in the RMAC. 5 and 12 overall they have been struggling a little bit this season but it will be a good a good game uh, you know uh, like you mentioned um, you know you got to take care of business uh, right before you take on a good team in MSU Denver who is 6 and 2 in the RMAC and 10 and 6 overall another good chance to go out there and and beat a good uh, RMAC team uh, this, thus far in the season a little bit of fun as well a former Dixie State volleyball player Taylor Durye is on the Metro State Denver roster I'm sure still good friends here uh, on this Dixie State volleyball team. So that's a little bit of an interesting uh, side note there. You get to see a former player come back and, 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 and play. And, and so that'll be a fun dynamic for Saturday night as well as the Trailblazers go forward with that. So a big opportunity for the Dixie State volleyball team. We mentioned it earlier in the show when we talked about, you know, the, the natural tendency is to want to have a little bit of doom and gloom when you drop a game. And as bad as, as we all wanted the Trailblazers to win last Friday at Colorado School of Mines, and as bad as they wanted to win that game themselves, 
they know. You could tell, too, just even their body language after the game and through the, through the handshake line. And it wasn't that they're happy that they lost, but they know that they were in the game. They could have. They should have won that game. They're still right where they need to be for the opportunity to still even win the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. And in order to do that, you got to take care of business at home. You have to protect your home court. Uh, that's one of the main things. It would be interesting to go back and see in conference championships in, in most sports do not lose at home. They might slip up a time uh, on the road, but uh, I've heard it said for basketball, and you could say the same for volleyball, if you win all your games at home and, and win most on the road, maybe split a couple times on the road, you're going to put yourself in a good a good position to win your conference championship. Yeah, no, don't, let's not forget, I mean, we're not too far removed from the Trailblazers winning uh, two games against top 20 ranked opponents in the country. So, I mean, let's not uh, make too big of a law, you know, deal of a, over the loss against um, Colorado School of Mines. Obviously, they played great. They were in it. They had their chances to win. Didn't end up getting the job done, but they, they got to take out the, the, the point that they played well, and they had an opportunity to beat a good team on the road, which is not an easy task, an easy feat to accomplish in this uh, conference, as it is a very good top to bottom. And I'm, 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 I'm encouraged and, and, and you know, obviously hopeful that they'll be able to return back to, to, to here on campus uh, at the SAC and play well against Chattern State and then obviously go through and play well, obviously, against um, MSU Denver. Uh, let's take a little bit of a uh, trail down. Again, we'll talk a little about mm -hmm. the football team, Carrick. Um, a little bit of a break from the RMAC play for the Trailblazer football team uh, this weekend. They go, obviously, play Grand Valley State. We just had our Know Your Foe segment getting to know them a little bit and, and what they're all about. You know, it's going to be a tough matchup. You likened it uh, onto like a, a Utah State going to play an, an Alabama team or maybe like a Clemson team and Ohio State. That kind of a matchup, but it's going to be a, a fun game. Obviously, it's going to be on ESPN3, like we mentioned, so it'll, it'll be a good, fun game to watch and a tough opponent. And like you said, go in. There's no pressure on you. It's their homecoming week. They're going to have, you know, all the hype coming into the game, and they're supposed to beat you by 50 or 60 or whatever. And obviously, you just got to go in, no pressure, just have fun, and, and, and who knows, maybe you could shock the world and come back with a W. Yeah, well, and, and I was actually having this exact conversation with Coach McClure earlier today. And, uh, you know, for a football team, and for any team in general, it's easy for us to say, like, just go in, no pressure. Well, there is pressure. You're going on, you're playing on a national stage. And, and like you said, the game's on ESPN3, which, side note, we will get those links distributed as soon as we can. ESPN will make specific links that will take you right to the game. Uh, you can find it on the Watch ESPN app, the ESPN app, and we'll get those links up on dig68athletics.com as well as soon as we know uh, what that link is. But there is a little bit of pressure. You're on that national stage. You're going to be going out, and it's going to feel, not that, not that it doesn't here, but it's going to feel like an actual college football game. The band's going to be playing. There's going to be a huge crowd, over 10,000, and it'll be a big-time stadium feel. And like you said, they'll have an opportunity to go and to make a statement on a national stage. I mean, if Dixie State were to go and win this game over a number two ranked Grand Valley State team and be 5-1 and one overall with that, with that win, they, I would be shocked if maybe they weren't ranked down toward the bottom of the top 25 or, or even at least receiving votes. This Dixie State team's never been ranked in, in Division II, uh, the AFCA coaches poll. So, uh, you know, we don't want to get too, ahead of our, too far ahead of ourselves, but go and have fun. Enjoy this time because this is what, uh, you know, top tier Division II football is all about at Grand Valley State. And they're going to have a fun time getting to see that stadium somewhere that you haven't seen before. And it'll be a good break from uh, Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference play. We talked about it before the show off the air. The important part is you go and you have fun. And hopefully, knock on wood, you come back healthy for the stretch run in RMAC play. Yeah, that's the most important part, Carrick. And if nothing else, you can go in and you can say, you know, uh, we always want to win this game. They're going to play hard and, and they're going to, you know, do everything they can to win that game. But if nothing else, you can say, let's go in and work out the kinks. And maybe if there's a few things that we've been working on in practice or a few things that we've not been able to do in previous games, let's go in, let's work out the kinks, let's try to execute, uh, you know, where we can and, and control the things that we can control. And if they do that, they obviously give themselves a good chance. It, you know, they have to, in order to win this game, they do have to play perfectly, Carrick, and they have to have virtually no mistakes. But it's obviously a good game to go do a, a, other things, like work out the kinks, and have the opportunity to make a big splash on the national stage. 
Just uh, less than a minute left here on the show. So let's let you know some other things that are going on just real quickly the rest of the weekend. Women's tennis will be in Grand Junction, Colorado at the Colorado Mesa duels. They've had some bad weather. A couple other games have been canceled, but they will play uh, sometime over the weekend against Colorado Mesa and against Colorado College. Women's swimming is in California for the PCSC pentathlon and relays. Men's and women's soccer both on the road Friday and Saturday this weekend women's soccer at Colorado Christian on Friday then into Sunday at Colorado School of Mines men's soccer is on the road on Saturday or excuse me no Friday game for men's soccer this week but they're at South Dakota Mines on Sunday so a lot going on if you want the whole schedule you check out DixieStateAthletics.com our time is gone another edition of Trailblazer Weekly is in the books remember you can watch the show anytime on demand at youtube.com slash Dixie State Athletics. For Drayson Ball, I'm Carrick Segmiller. Thanks for making us part of your day. We'll see you next week. Go Trailblazers.